Okay, welcome uh, everyone uh, at this uh, webinar powered by uh, IOF uh, 2020. Uh, my name is uh, Gerben Splinter of uh, Wageningen Economic uh, Research, and I will be your moderator uh, for today. Um, we carried out some uh, webinars in the past, uh, which you can find on our website, uh, IOF 2020.eu uh, slash education. Uh, please mention that this webinar uh, also will be recorded, just like we did with uh, our webinars in the past, which you can find uh, on, uh, on that website. Um, so please let me uh, introduce uh, shortly uh, our uh, project, uh, IOF uh, 2020, uh, for them furthermore. Um, IOF 2020, uh, Internet of Food and Farm, is a 30 million EU project. Uh, that validates uh, innovative IoT solutions for the agri-food sector on, on large-scale test sites all over Europe. And the project brings over uh, 120 partners, uh, ranging from software providers and equipment manufacturers, over research institutes uh, to agricultural uh, producers uh, and processors together. IOF uh, 2020 uh, um, um, supports the development validation and market entry of digital service innovations for farmers and the processing industry all over Europe and helps building an innovation accelerating ecosystems. So uh, this webinar we present to you today is about uh, European regional perspectives on uh, smart uh, farming. Uh, what do you get today? You will get uh, insights into the role of uh, digital innovation uh, hubs in the regional development uh, of digital farming uh, by three uh, European projects uh, uh, we have today for you. That is at first IOF 2020, of course, and after that, uh, uh, smart agri hubs. And uh, the third one is traceability and uh, big data. And of course, thank you for joining us uh, today and your interest in this, uh, this topic. Um, I will not be hosting this uh, this webinar, of course, uh, on my own. We have uh, three perfect ex experts uh, today joining us, and we'll tell you some more later on. Uh, the topic uh, at first will be introduced uh, by Jose Luis Molina Zamora. Uh, Jose is active as a CEO of uh, the Hispatec Group, and his presentation he will address a regional collaboration with regard to smart farming is applied in the IOF 2020 project. After that, uh, we have uh, Frank Beckers, Beckers, and he is active as a senior researcher uh, on business models and value networks at uh, the Dutch uh, TNO. And he is involved in the uh, Smart Agri Hubs project as a work package leader, responsible for capacity building of more than 400 digital innovation hubs to support the digital transformation in the European digital agri food sector. Uh, his presentation will provide a conceptual framework of uh, this landscape and the tools uh, which are used. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to time uh, limits, uh, uh, Frank uh, uh, cannot be with us uh, uh, all the time. Yes, uh, maybe he can join us later uh, in the second part also by phone, he, uh, he told me. So we have to see how to arrange that, but uh, he will tell you something more about that later on. And um, the third speaker uh, would be uh, Judith Anda, uh, but she couldn't make it today. But we have a perfect stand-in uh, with uh, Cecilia Ganan. And Cecilia is active as an international consultant and external expert of the European Commission in regional and urban policies. Uh, Cecilia has worked at the Partnership Traceability and Big Data project since its creation. And Cecilia will talk about collaboration in smart farming uh, uh, from an interregional perspective. And at last, uh, we also have joining us today Daoud Urdu. He's my colleague and he is the organizer of these webinars. And of course, uh, colleague Marion Bogers, she's doing the technical part uh, for this, uh, this webinar. Um, at the end, uh, we have probably uh, 15 minutes to 20 minutes left uh, for, uh, for questions and answers. Uh, so it works like this. You will be, uh, be muted by, uh, by Marion during the, uh, the session. And if you already have some questions uh, for the presenters, you can ask them by using the chat. 
so please do so. And um, uh, at the end of the three presentations, um, uh, I'd like to give uh, uh, each of the presenters the opportunity uh, to uh, to give you their answers to your uh, your questions. Um, so that's how it uh, it works uh, for uh, for today. Um, the webinar is uh, is scheduled till uh, till 1700 hours. Uh, so I will now give the mic to uh, Jose Luis uh, to kick off this uh, this webinar, and Marion will make him a presenter. So please, uh, Jose, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Herben. Um, let me just share the presentation. And uh, well, good morning to to everybody. Uh, good morning if you are in the America side. Good afternoon to everybody if you are in Europe or Middle East that I've seen there are some uh, people attending from both of those areas. Uh, my my goal is uh, trying to, to talk about uh, regional collaboration in smart farming uh, from the perspective of a company, of a technology company, an ag tech company that is Hispatech Group, who is uh, basically focused on, on that space. Um, I'll try to be uh, fast enough uh, just to 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 keep uh, well to maintain my 10 minutes uh, and then at the end of the presentation so we'll have to the possibility to exchange some ideas questions and obviously to answer whatever kind of question or participation that would be uh, coming from the attendants um, first of all, and uh, just as a presentation on who we are in Hispatech Group, our mission is creating and supplying best digital solutions uh, from uh, the field, from the farm, and up to the market. Um, and we work for companies and their agronomists and farmers' ecosystems in mainly focus, not only, but mainly focus on the specialty crops. So fruits, vegetables, vineyards, olive oil, uh, we are more than 150 professionals uh, that basically we are a specialist in agriculture, in, in ICT technology and in da data science. We've been for more than 30 years in the, in the market and basically we work uh, mainly, well, or I would say almost exclusively for privately owned companies, farmers uh, and agronomists that are distributed in mainly in Iberia and uh, some countries in Latin America. <clears throat> what we do in terms of uh, in terms of uh, digital technology, um, basically, is uh, implementing, developing, and implementing solutions in the production side, in the field production side, then in the transformation arena or in the aggregation and transformation arena, and then in the logistics and commercialization area. As I was mentioning, mainly focus on the perishable side, on the fresh fruits and vegetables, and even uh, wine or olive oil, so high added value products in the in the agricultural space. That is basically in the uh, as a as a percentage of global um, production, we are talking about something like 12% of total uh, food production in the world. Uh, we participate as well in R&D uh, and innovation projects on an international scale and basically we are participating in IOF 2020 project that is the, the one that is hosting this, this event, this webinar, where we are focused in the fruit trial, uh, working with olive oil production. Uh, we are working as well in the Smart Agri Hubs uh, European project in, in, in focused on regional digital innovation hubs. And we've been working as well, but th that's a, another past project, European project in the WIAM for i project, that is water and energy advanced management for irrigation, uh, basically linking intelligent water and energy management network and with a cloud-based service-oriented platform for irrigation decision-making. Um, basically, from the point of view of societal challenges and in and digitalization so we are now in a very interesting moment i would say where uh, we are uh, defining the next generation european union so probably this pandemic with uh, covid uh, is a is bad news in general but probably it's pretty good news in in terms of redefining our economy our system our society 
in many aspects. So we need to rebuild many things. So probably it's the right time to rebuild them in a different way, in a better way. Let's 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 work for it. Uh, we have on top of the table the farm to fork strategy coming from the European Union, where we are uh, targeting sustainable food production, reducing uh, food loss and waste. Uh, we are uh, targeting sustainable food processing and distribution, so being more effective in terms of logistics and in terms of footprints and so on. And we are talking about sustainable food consumption. We have as well the European Union Biodiversity uh, Strategy, that is one of the important parts of the agri-food system. And in parallel to all of that, we have the Sustainable Development Goals uh, that were uh, defined by the year 2015. And right now, I think we are in, in a process where in the next decade, we should be rolling out those uh, 17 Sustainable Development Goals in a massive way, especially in the European space where we are particularly linked to them. Um, we have uh, agri-food chains or networks, I would say, where we have multiple involved actors, um, where collaboration is a must if we want to achieve impact. And basically, I'm putting here in the center of the whole uh, challenge, the agri-food sector. So we have to, we need to help uh, the agri-food companies, the cooperatives, the farmers, the agronomies to do a better job on whatever they do uh, in food production, in uh, environment uh, sustainability, in uh, reaching the goals that consumers are demanding from agri-food sector and surrounding the agri-food sector, we are uh, public administrations in this specific case and where we are talking about IOF 2020 olive oil uh, use case. Um, we are talking about uh, Junta de Andalucía, which is the regional government. We are talking about as well research at universities that are surrounding this agri-food ecosystem consumers that at the end of the day are the, the final, the, the ones that pay all of this and the ones that are requiring more sustainability and a more social commitment of the agri-food sector. And we have act tech companies where in this specific case, in Hispanic, we are one of those act tech companies that are focused on providing technology to help uh, the agri-food sector to be better. Um, we identify some areas as uh, among some others to collaborate uh, among public and private sectors one of them where we are at some point uh, where we are uh, at, at, to some level collaborating today we are working in open data policy with high maturity level so i mean that uh, we need the public administration um, releasing uh, big uh, flows of data uh, in uh, an industrial way where we can access to those data through APIs and things similar to that, not uh, through webs that uh, probably that was uh, good enough 10 years ago, it's, it's never more that time. Uh, we need uh, or we think it can be provided high value in competitive market intelligence from the regional perspective, country perspective or the European perspective. Um, we need data hubs for bench learning, benchmarking and bench learning among different agri-food uh, players. Uh, we need incentives to uh, speed up digitalization investments. So digitalization investments are gonna happen anyway in the agri-food sector in the next years. What we want to be is the first ones digitalizing the full uh, agri-food network. We need innovative digital solutions uh, public purchasing, so public administration is a big purchaser of solutions. So we ask them to do uh, innovative purchasing processes. Uh, there are some areas of strategic R&D and I where collaboration public and private would be highly welcome. And in some areas, this is happening. And at the end of the day, uh, we are, and right now we are in the middle of that process of, of proposing uh, big traction programs of agri-food digitalization with impact goals. So whatever that we um, uh, that we do with digitalization should generate 
impact, uh, tangible impact uh, in the agri-food sector, in the society, in the environment. Which is our vision. Uh, our vision is that we are right now in, a, in, the, in the perfect moment to uh, fix the vision for the year 20 and 25, uh, making the European Union a smart agro continent with resilient and essential food production and distribution, with a safe agri-food sector, sustainable, efficient, market-oriented, being global, uh, producing customized and healthy food, and with a very strong ag tech ecosystem that is highly competitive in the international scale. So we are in the right time to uh, generate that goal. And uh, it's in our hands to start working to achieve this vision in five years time. And thank you and welcome any kind of uh, question, contribution, or whatever kind of thing that you want to talk about. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Jose Luis, for uh, this presentation and also introducing this, uh, this topic. Uh, so please, if you have any questions, use the chat box and uh, we will try to answer them uh, later on in the question and answer part. And for now, I will uh, give the floor to, uh, to Frank Berkers uh, to start his uh, presentation. Frank, please go ahead. Thank you. Is my screen uh, visible to you? Good. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Frank Berkers. I work for um, TNO. It's a large Dutch um, research and technology organization. And I work for the Department of Strategic Business Analysis. So in my department, we, um, we are engaged with looking at uh, innovations from, uh, from a business perspective. And from that uh, role, um, I'm also engaged in the Smart Agri Hubs project. I lead uh, Work Package 4 on digital innovation hubs uh, capacity building together with um, um, the form formerly uh, announced um, participants in this uh, webinar, Judith Anda um, from Andalusia. Um, the title of my uh, presentation today is Digital Innovation Hubs is actually the region embodied and I will try to explain that to you in a few slides. Uh, first, uh, looking at the um, uh, Smart Agri Hubs uh, project. Smart Agri Hubs uh, revolves around building up a network, a pan European network of digital innovation hubs. At TNO, we have been working on the concept of digital innovation hubs in, in several sectors and currently also in, in the agri food uh, sector. And Smart Agri Hubs is indeed focusing on, on a pan European network of digital innovation hubs and competence centers in order to, to strengthen, um, say, the capacities of, of um, Europe in, a, in an innovative way. In fact, we can see this network of digital innovation hubs as a true reorganization of the innovation landscape. So it's it's basically putting the region more central in the innovation. Uh, Smart Agri Hubs uh, complements uh, projects like uh, IOF 2020. This project is also quite uh, big with uh, 20 million of, of EU funding. And uh, most importantly, we set up this network of digital innovation hubs, but also run a number of so-called uh, flagship innovation experiments and these are uh, experiments that should, on the one hand, um, uh, promote and, and establish innovations in, in the regions, as well as strengthen the support and, uh, supporting uh, digital innovation hubs. So I think that's enough for Smart Agri Hubs. Um, in Smart Agri Hubs, the digital innovation hub is, is centric. So what is a digital innovation hub? It's a support organization that aims to make businesses more competitive by speeding up the development and uptake of digital innovations. They provide these services close to the end users at working distance and thereby cater to the needs of agricultural producers and fruit processors in a specific region. So in the, the definition of a digital innovation hub, the, the, the concept of region is already um, embodied. Um, 
looking at that uh, from a more conceptual perspective, we use this visual. There are some say, alternative visuals about digital innovation hubs uh, going around, but this is the one we use in, in Smart Agri Hubs. And basically, what we see here is the different um, types of actors that form the ecosystem which the digital innovation hub has to to um, orchestrate um, i was a little bit inspired by the previous presentation uh, putting the the farmer more centric in this visual the digital innovation hub is really centric but of course this is um related to um to the audience that we try to cater with with these uh, presentations eh? but let me be clear on that um we we are farmer centric as well um okay so in this ecosystem we have incubators we have governments we have cooperatives we have farmer communities investors industry associations education institutes startups research organizations advisories also other competent centers uh, fueling the um, the innovative uh, capacity in a certain region so and the job of the digital innovation hub is really to to network all of these actors this is a, a mapping uh, created by uh, Mara Vintges of the Greenport Horty campus. And she really made an effort to map and identify all the different actors of those types in her specific digital innovation hub ecosystem. So this is the, the list, the number of actors you are dealing with as a digital innovation hub. And most of them have regional um, presence. It's not only about um, networking your environment it's also about serving this regional ecosystem so the, the role of a digital innovation hub is to create value for the innovations in its ecosystem and we set up a longer list of of innovation services which we think a digital innovation hub should um, deliver and we identified three different groups um, the blue ones are the technology related services, the green ones are the business related services, and the um, red ish ones are the ecosystem related services. The Digital Innovation Hub is supposed to deliver these type of services to its ecosystem, but it, has, it doesn't have to deliver them all by itself. It can arrange for different actors to help deliver these services so it's also a matter of brokering who needs the services who can deliver the services brokering is a key um, activity in um, the functionality of um, a digital innovation hub um, as with many of the digital innovation hubs the regional government municipalities or provinces are actually founding and supporting the digital innovation hub. so this is a very um, important stakeholder in the concept of a digital innovation hub and uh, in this list we see uh, for what type of services a regional government would be willing to pay uh, to such that these uh, services are being delivered the reason for that being is that the digital innovation hub is an organization that can help concretize and operationalize regional innovation and employment policies, industrial policies. Um, therefore, the, the, the functions that the Digital Innovation Hub has are quite closely related to what a regional government actually needs to uh, realize. For instance, in the context of this um, Horty campus, um, the, the vision is that everyone on earth is entitled to have healthy food and green living, while the strategy really is, or the vision is aimed at maintaining a leading um, export position by collaboration in the local ecosystem. So it's really in the vision of the uh, region that, that this Digital Innovation Hub is actually delivering uh, the organization of that uh, type of uh, competitiveness. Um, another influence uh, on, on what a digital innovation hub can deliver and actually embodies is building on the regional profile. I think you're all aware of the concept called smart specialization or the RIS3 
uh, initiative. And this is basically looking at the say industrial profile of a region and determining directions for innovation uh, that help strengthen uh, the region in context of Europe. So there's also this, this industrial and analytical perspective that can be embodied by the digital innovation Hub, and often it is the foundation indeed of a uh, digital innovation hub. Another uh, regional policy oriented um, line of thought is the um, regional performance on the common agricultural policy specific objectives. And so there is an analysis on how well uh, each region is performing on the nine different uh, specific objectives. And this can help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your region. And typically these are also uh, um, uh, carried out by the Digital Innovation Hub. So this again um, uh, puts the emphasis on the relationship between the Digital Innovation Hub and the region. So, um, what we also see is that digital innovation hubs collaborate um, with other digital innovation hubs in a wider region. So many of the functions that a digital innovation hub performs are cross-regional. So it, it really makes sense to network a local group of digital innovation hubs, such as is done in, for instance, Ireland. And there's a group of digital innovation hubs operating like a network, helping each other out and uh, reinforcing each other. So not about competition between smaller regions, but about collaboration and uh, complementarity between digital innovation apps such that you can make a stronger wider regional proposition things that we also see is um, say pan-european pan, -European, pan uh, region collaboration for instance the digital innovation hub i just explained the, the green horty campus is collaborating with digital innovation hubs in in uh, for instance uh, almeria in, in spain and and they're really collaborating about uh, greenhouse technology which can help out this region so and again this is indeed the value of smart agri hubs to help set up and broker such complementarities knowledge uh, built up in one region technology developed in one region can be used to strengthen another European region. And this is really where we need the European network for. So connecting the dots for a stronger Europe. In summary, I think digital innovation hubs are the region embodied um, because digital innovation hub is by and for the regional ecosystem. It's implementing regional innovation and development policies. It's enhancing the smart specialization profile. It focuses on uh, common agricultural policy specific objectives of that region. Um, it can help collaboration in the wider region with other digital innovation hubs. And it helps to network within European context, help build a stronger Europe. Um, so there are many angles of the link between the region and the digital innovation hub. Um, so, indeed, the Digital Innovation Hub is the region embodied. Um, I will stick around for a little bit, but then I have to get moving. I will uh, participate in this webinar using my, my phone, so in the end I can take your questions nevertheless. Thank you for your attention so far. Super, Frank. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and uh, uh, also uh, very kind of you to join us. Uh, uh, later on uh, in the question and answer part. Uh, uh, for now, I'd like to, uh, to go to, uh, to our last uh, speaker, Cecilia, and uh, a very special thanks uh, to Cecilia uh, to join us uh, in this last moment, uh, replacing uh, Judith Anda. Um, so, Judith, after, so, Cecilia, please uh, go ahead and start your presentation. Marion will make you a presenter. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity of being with you here today. I'm very glad to, repl to replace uh, Judith and to share with you some ideas about the, the work that uh, the thematic inter and regional partnership on traceability and big data in the agri-food value chain has been making in the last years. 
I have had the opportunity of collaborating with this network since its beginning, and um, I must say I have seen an enormous evolution and an enormous amount of creativity and proactiveness of this uh, partnership. And in fact, they have achieved um, many, many things. Uh, I will try to summarize them. But first of all, I would like to put uh, some context in the initiative. As you know, this partnership is anchored in the smart specialization approach of uh, the general director for, uh, for regional policies of the European Commission. Frank very briefly introduced you to this approach. Uh, and as he said, this is an approach uh, aiming at the identification in a participatory way of the strengths of each region in order to focus all the efforts in terms of innovation and in terms of investments in those areas of specialization. Um, the smart specialization approach was uh, oper operationalized in 2015 by the joint research centers in three specific platforms, agri-food, energy and industry. And uh, they are supporting, they are providing a framework for regions to, to cooperate in these three fields um, across Europe. So the Traceability and Big Data Partnership uh, is part since the beginning uh, of the Agri-Food Platform, but today it has also a double affiliation and it is also a member of the Industrial Modernization Platform. This is um, a brief summary of the partnership today. It gathers 22 regions, uh, it has 12 associated members, and it connects around 1,700 stakeho stakeholders in smart farming across Europe. And um, it is a partnership which is led by the Spanish region of Andalusia and co-led by the Italian region of Emilia-Romagna. Uh, this partnership represents 10% of the agricultural holdings in Europe and 10% of all the agribusinesses in the European Union. So as you can imagine, uh, this provides a very relevant critical mass, uh, not only to um, provoke synergies among members, but also it allows the necessary environment for a standardization and for experimentation that is needed in this, in this field. The partnership in, this, uh, in its very first steps uh, decided to, um, uh, to, sh uh, to share the idea of defining the, the main areas uh, in a joint way. So the partnership launched a part uh, participatory um, bottom-up process in which every region took part and gave the opportunity of participating to every agent in the value chain at the regional level. And finally, four main thematic areas were chosen. Smart monitoring at the value chain, life cycles of the value chain, open data, interoperability, data governance and cybersecurity, and also consumer experience in decision-making processes. After some years, uh, the partnership started around the end of 2016. Uh, the partnership uh, has been able to um, make some interesting projects. Uh, for example, it had the opportunity of participating in a pilot action for interregional innovation investments launched by DG Regio a couple of years ago. Uh, it, is, uh, it has been awarded by an um, uh, Interreg Europe project currently in place. And uh, it is also member, many of the regions are also member of the huge H2020 Smart AgriHub project. And of course, you know, all the projects are aligned with the sustainable development goals in one way or another. Beyond this uh, work done in the working groups, uh, I would say this is a very dynamic interregional network, as it is shown by the variety of initiatives uh, that uh, has been launched. For example, they have a surveillance unit looking for possible uh, areas of financing. They have a new website just launched. I invite you to visit it. They organize a monthly webinar on many topics related to the digitalization of the agri-food value chain. They produce a monthly newsletter and they are present and very active in social media. They have a Twitter account, they, they have a YouTube channel, and um, they are continuously um, imagining new and creative ways to give the partner regions the possibility for visibility, for connections, for synergies. 
But uh, if I would have to choose one area where uh, I think uh, the partnership has been more useful in the last months is in its support to the digital conversion of every regional ecosystem. Because as very well uh, Frank already explained, they are just making um, the accompaniment uh, to all the uh, regional nodes to evolve towards digital innovation hubs. So we are uh, seeing the shifting perspective from a circular uh, approach to a one-stop shop approach. Future steps in the partnerships roadmap. Well, if we take into account the, uh, the current context in which a new uh, European programming period is about to start and where the COVID-19 has heavily impacted the sector, uh, the partnership is involved in very urgent uh, challenges, as for example, the identification of a new civil portfolio of business ideas able to trigger interregional investments for the recovery process at the European level. Then uh, the partnership would like to be consolidated as a, as a useful tool for the digitalization of the uh, smart farming sector in Europe. And it has also the challenge to continue its uh, commitment in the connection between the academia the uh, research center, but also with companies and with also with technological agents. They are working also towards the long-term sustainability. Sustainability, of course, is a cross-cutting uh, cross um, challenge of the partnership. We all know the contribution that smart farming and big data applications uh, make to the productivity and to the economic success of firms and of the sector. But if societal and environmental uh, considerations are not taken into account, it is probably uh, going to nowhere. So the partnership uh, is committed to operate at the value chain level, to look for opportunities for companies um, in a connected global economy, and is always very aware of the societal challenges that must be, must be addressed in its intervention. At the end, uh, this partnership is, um, is showing the importance of uh, creating coalitions and ecosystem. In a moment where we have at the global level uh, the framework provided by the Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, and at the European level the framework provided by the Green Deal and the um, From Far to Fork strategies, it is very important not to focus on the development of a specific technology, but focusing instead in the design of an ecosystem which is um, equitative, which is plural, which is diverse. Why I say that? Because it is important that, this, that in this kind of interregional cooperation networks, we take into account all kinds of, of regions. There is a danger if we only um, consider um, very big and specialized innovation regions, maybe at the end we can have a very good uh, average innovation standard or uh, index, but um, maybe at the expense of other regions which are deprived for a future innovation. To finalize, let me share with you the partnership's contact in social media, and also to uh, share with you a quote that I like very much. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot remember this his author, but it says, you cannot create a cluster or a network, it must grow. And in my opinion, it reveals two elements which are key for any successful network, which, are, which is uh, time and which is uh, trust building. So thank you very much. And I am, I'm open for any questions that may arise. Thank you very much, uh, Cecilia, for your uh, beautiful uh, presentation. Um, so we have now some, uh, some time left uh, uh, for, uh, for questions and, uh, and answers. Uh, not many questions and answers are coming in uh, uh, at this moment, uh, one first question was asked uh, by uh, Jason Bradley, but I don't know if it suits this uh, this topic uh, today, uh, Jason, because of course today is about smart farming, uh, smart farming uh, network uh, ecosystems, and um, your question uh, is about uh, is a very technical one, uh, a little bit different maybe than the presenters uh, are presenting today, uh, but still the question is. Uh, uh, he likes to hear how presenters from the presenters uh, how on-farm devices and sensors 
are being connected to the internet through, through uh, 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 low ray one networks. It's very technical also for me. Um, uh, to the 4G, 5G and newly available options like Starlink. Um, don't know if uh, uh, Jose is, is able to answer that question and otherwise we have to skip it and maybe uh, outside of this webinar uh, someone can, uh, can help you out, uh, Jason. Uh, uh, but let me try. Jose, yes, is it something uh, you can answer? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, German. So basically, well, as you mentioned, this is a pretty technical one. So newly available options like Starlink, not yet released. So basically not even in beta test uh, phase. So basically let's wait and see. So hopefully won't be a problem. In the case of LoRaWAN networks, uh, these kind of uh, local networks are being connected to the internet in different 3G, 4G, even some pilots in 5G, but uh, you know, not no, not a special. There's no a special complexity on doing this. So this is a technical issue with technical answers that are uh, satisfactory. So this this is something that is done as of today. And in the case of Starlink, as I was mentioning, so let's wait to Mr. Elon Musk uh, the release date. Not not yet available. So waiting to see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, uh, Jose Luis, uh, and also thank you from uh, from Jason, as I can see in the chat box, uh, for uh, uh, trying to answer this uh, this question. Perfect. Uh, so I have a second question uh, uh, coming in, and that question is uh, is asked by uh, by Paul Malone. Uh, his qu question is: I would like to hear the presenter's view on the importance of data sharing throughout the ecosystem to enable future innovation and collaboration, and in particular. What are the main barriers uh, to achieving these goals? Uh, could that be a question, Cecilia, who could be answered by you? Or maybe Frank is already joining us also and can answer that. But Cecilia, yeah. first, uh, I'd like okay. to give I can, you, I can start. I'm probably, yeah, I can start and probably Jason or Jose Luis can continue. Mm -hmm. um, I think for sure uh, sharing data is one challenge that we have um, as Europeans in every sector. In, in agri-food is especially complex because of the variety of data and because of the uh, different sources of data. Uh, so this challenge is even more urgent. Um, Europe, the European Commission is very uh, involved in issues like um, establishing the right rules for allowing a correct and ethical use of data and also is involved in a public consultation with the stakeholders to promote interoperability. But for sure, if this uh, context is not, is not clear and is not pushed by the, um, by the regulators, it will be difficult uh, because sometimes sharing data needs um, a real push at the beginning and a real uh, objective and a real justification uh, because uh, uh, sometimes it's, it's not easy, you know, from an ancient uh, culture of uh, owning data. And uh, we are living a, a, com a complete different paradigm in terms of data that needs to be cleared, that needs to be clarified, that needs to be supported, and that needs to um, have some rules and some uh, limits. Okay, thank you very much, Cecilia. Is there something you'd like to add on that, uh, Jose Luis, or? Well, just highlighting the high importance of data sharing and probably the first uh, organizations that have to be sharing data have to be public administrations. They are owners of big amounts of data and uh, always taking care of uh, avoiding any kind of confidentiality issues. But from the statistical point of view, that's something that can be done immediately and there's plenty of room for improvement in that area taking into account that the fuel for artificial intelligence and advanced analytics is data. So just releasing data, the available data, I'm not talking about creating new data or sharing new data, just releasing the existing ones, we can fuel and speed up uh, active uh, growth pretty quickly. And if as a consequence of that example, we uh, reinforce the data sharing value among different players, I'm sure will speed up even faster. Okay, thank you very much for answering that also, uh, Jose Luis. Then we have a new question coming in. 
Um, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. I, okay. can, I can um, hear Frank Berker is, is coming in. Yes, um, so uh, perfect, uh, Frank, for joining us uh, again. Um, I will be going to the next question. So maybe ah, I can, uh, can, can give uh, Frank uh, also the opportunity to answer some questions, of course. Um, the, uh, the next question is asked by Peter Paré, and he is asking horticulture is a spe specific ecosystem. Andalusia, in the Dutch uh, uh, country we have called the region called Westland, and a few other regions uh, are in that subject. Uh, regions play a big role uh, in such specialist sector. Do you see the same role in big sectors like wine or dairy? Da yeah, dairy, dairy, I have to say. <laughs> um, maybe Frank, uh, would you um, like to yes, pick up this question? Yes, but I'm not sure I can fully uh, answer it to, to Peter's uh, needs, but uh, I think every sector has its own uh, specific uh, um, profile. So indeed, uh, the, the greenhousing sector has, has a unique profile, but also the dairy farming as it is done in Netherlands or in Ireland. Uh, differs quite a lot, but it also has a huge um, export potential, not only in, in, in knowledge, but also in, in the uh, goods themselves. Huh? So, um, so I think uh, looking at, at what is in common in Europe and, and linking this between the regions uh, can help us uh, strengthen that, uh, that export profile. Okay, thank you very much, Frank. And uh, Jose or maybe Cecilia, look, you would, would you like to add something to this uh, this answer of Frank? No? Uh, always, okay. always something coming from Peter Pare is a, a, a good question for sure. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I think he's right that the horticulture or fruits probably is an easier uh, segment for speeding up uh, digitalization through digital innovation hubs, whilst in some other a more um, less dense and less uh, co consistent sectors or segments like dairy or like wine, probably the, the challenges are bigger. So it can be done, it will be done, but the challenges are bigger. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, other question, I think this one is uh, for, uh, for Frank. Uh, how many do it, uh, how, how many digital innovation hubs are uh, operational today in Europe, being financial independent? Is that a question you can answer, Frank? Um, no, I cannot answer it. Um, of course, there are more digital innovation hubs uh, than only in the Smart Agri. Uh, I think that the, the DNET uh, project, it's a collaborative effort of multiple uh, networks, should be closest to giving this answer. Um, and uh, I think there's uh, a difference between, say, um, financially independent and, and operational. Um, so I, I think uh, part of my um, talk today clearly explains that there is um, a regional governmental um, legitimation for having a digital innovation hub. And, and usually this, this comes along with also financial flows, um, which is not a bad thing, I think, because uh, they they create public value in that so the operational and financial independency um, are um, two different uh, aspects i would say okay thank you very much for answering uh, then a new question is how can we bring all these ideas to the farmers where could we find defined and proposed mechanisms to demonstrate the value and the profitability of these approaches do you have some regional examples Cecilia, could you answer this question maybe? Yes, um, I think uh, because uh, I'm, I'm speaking both from the side of the regional uh, partnership um, and also from the digital innovation has probably, uh, at least in the interregional partnerships uh, like the one I explained, um, they are based not in the participation of ad uh, regional administration, but on, um, on the participation of what is called in the European language, the quadruple helix um, um, rep uh, representatives. So uh, we have regions, regional administration, we have the uh, participation in, the, in these networks of companies, both agri-food companies and technological companies, 
we have technological centers, we have academia, and we have even civil society, mainly in the case of the Traceability and Big Data Partnership and Consumers Associations. So if the partnership is alive, if the partnership is working, they uh, tend to have um, meeting points, physical or virtual, or uh, a kind of um, dynamic presence where all the actors have the opportunities to uh, connect and, uh, and to exchange views. In my opinion, if the regional administration leaving this regional ecosystem is um, dynamic enough, it should have the ability to facilitate the exchange of ideas and the um, delivery of information to the farmer, to the ultimate user. So uh, I believe it connects with the new role that uh, we are uh, seeing today in the public uh, sector, which is not anymore to be the one who is just uh, establishing the rules, but who is uh, an actor who is mainly uh, facilitating processes of communication and of connection. So in my opinion, if the partnership uh, and the students uh, regional ecosystem is working correctly, it should have, it should find the mechanisms to deliver useful messages to, to the final user. In my experience, uh, the leading processes are uh, on the side of the regional administration in most cases, but it depends because there are some regional ecosystems which are led by technological centers or even by universities in some cases. And, uh, but at the end, uh, it is a responsibility of the leading actor to assure um, this delivery uh, of um, knowledge, of expertise, and uh, to really make the agri-food representatives, the agri-food um, sector, uh, the farmers' um, voice connected to the rest of the actors in the ecosystem. So it depends, in, in my opinion, in, in, every, in every case of uh, how the, the network is, is functioning. If the farmers are well associated, are well represented, if they have mm -hmm. um, a voice which is articulated, which has some level of institutionalization, it would probably be easier to get connected to the network. Mm -hmm. If we find cases where the farmers um, have a low level of association and of representation, this level of connection uh, decreases. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for answering that question. We had another question uh, coming in by uh, Ahmed Warani. Um, uh, Ahmed, I don't really understand your question, but maybe our presenters do. You say IoT, uh, to which extent or in which fields do you feel that technology can be an extra burden in production? Uh, is there someone, Jose, Cecilia, or Frank, uh, who understands well, this everything. question by Ahmed and otherwise we have to ask him again to define his question uh, again but Jose you like to try? Yeah, so, uh, yeah I would say uh, technology if the goal is technology by itself is always an extra burden so we need to look for specific advantages after implementing technology so technology cannot be by itself the the, the goal when we see projects that uh, the name is the blockchain project, we are wrong, fully wrong, because that's never a goal. So, you know, technology has to be a tool to achieve impacts, to achieve goals, desirable goals. And I think we have quite a lot of them. So we need, we have the societal uh, goals. We have the specific agent goals of every single co-op or company, the specific farmer goals, then, we uh, technology well applied we can say as an active company that all the projects that we develop and we implement they have less than two years of payback period if we do those projects in the right way so they are extremely profitable but we need to be aligned with clear goals and um, mm -hmm. implementing those projects properly okay perfect thank you jose um we have a question coming in from my colleague uh, daoud he is asking, uh, what are the next best actions uh, for the three roles? Regional policy institutes, ag tech companies, and applied research institute institutes for achieving the sustainable development goals 
uh, within uh, the digital uh, innovation hubs. Um, Frank, could I give uh, give you the first one to uh, to answer this question, maybe? Yes. So, let me did, it, yes. did you hear it clear? Yes. Yes. I think it's a very good question. Um, for me, the next action would be understanding that, say, deployment of technology in uh, large volumes is the real hurdle that we're looking at. So it's not about putting more technologies on the stack. It's about deploying technologies in the field on a large scale. That, that should be the real challenge. Okay. I think the, the concept of the European Digital Innovation Hubs is focusing on that, but that will take some years to be operationalized, I would say. But that would be the priority, in my opinion. Okay, thank you very much for answering that uh, that question. Um, I see no m f further uh, questions coming in at this uh, this moment. Uh, so if you uh, have a question, please use the chat box uh, very quickly now for the final last question to these uh, three perfect uh, experts we have here today. And otherwise, uh, I will be uh, be wrapping it up uh, for uh, for now. Uh, nothing coming in, no. Okay, then I'm really going to end this uh, this session. And um, uh, of course, uh, on screen again, please notice that this uh, webinar is recorded and also you can take a look at it uh, uh, afterwards in, uh, in, in just a few days uh, on our website. And uh, if you um, want more information also from the, the, the presenter speakers, please uh, contact my colleague uh, Daoud Udu. He will find a way in contacting, of course, uh, Jose Luis and Cecilia and, uh, and Frank. And um, at first, I'd like to thank them uh, for joining us uh, us today and to, for giving uh, three perfect uh, presentations uh, in this uh, this webinar and sharing their uh, their insights. Uh, also, of course, to my colleagues uh, uh, Marion and uh, and Daoud uh, for uh, for helping out and arranging this uh, this interesting uh, uh, topic. We'll be having some more webinars. Uh, of course, uh, on the IOF uh, 2020 platform uh, this year. So please look out for uh, for those ones. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, as today. And also on behalf of uh, of all the other people involved, uh, like I just mentioned, um, uh, have a good day and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice evening. Uh, have a nice day. <laughs>